Good morning everybody, it's Jean Marie. I'm going to do a tutorial today using the April Bargain Bead Box. Um, this is my second tutorial with the April Bargain Bead Box. And I'm going to stick with this pretty purple color scheme. This box to me, um, I don't know if any of you agree or not, but I, I just got this huge boho vibe from it. It just, I think it's all the trees and I don't know, it just, it just says boho to me. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make something using some leather, um, using some of this, some of these really pretty satiny necklace cords, using some leather and the silver and purple and see what I can come up with. See if it will come out looking the way I have it pictured in my head. This is one of the earrings that um, we're going to make and this portion of the of the necklace here will be very similar to this right here. And if I have time, I actually want to do a bracelet as well, but we'll see. <laughs> Depends on how long this one takes and how long it takes me to figure it out. So to get started, I have these um, cords, rolls of cord for a bead, you know, for bead um you can use them when you're bead weaving or whatever. They're, they're Eslon. And it's a mix. I got these from Amazon. I thought I had a purple one, but I do have one missing, so it could very well be my purple one. But I have this one here that's kind of a... Actually, I know what one's missing. It's the black. Because this one is not black. So it's a black one that's missing. I don't have a purple. But that's okay. This one is like this gray, like a really dark gray. And it hides in these beads really well, so I think it will work just fine. So to start with, I'm going to want, oh, I'm going to pull off three feet. It probably is going to end up being a little too much. I'm not, I'm really not 100% sure how much I need. Yeah, three feet is definitely going to be too much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do about two feet. I'll do about two feet. We'll see how that looks. <laughs> I may run out. Who knows? But I think that will be plenty for now. Because these two pieces are going to be done individually. So to start with, I'm just going to put both of them. If I can find a crimp bead in here. I thought I was doing myself a favor getting stuff out in advance, but I'm not so sure I did. I'll put them right on both of them. And give it a crimp, just like we would if we were using beading wire, beading strands. And again, trim it off just, just like any other time. These clamshells I have are very, very small. They are probably the smallest clamshells I've ever seen, and I love them. They hide so well. They disappear, and you work very, very well. I got those through um, the sister store, Beadbox Bargains. I'm wishing now I had gotten more because I don't think they even had them. But if they come out again, I will be grabbing more of them. <laughs> you can bet on it. So I'm just going to slide this down over. Yep folded portion of my <laughs> that folded portion of my string okay tool time <laughs> okay well let's try it with a little DNA There we go. No. Man, oh man. I'm going to start right off in good shape today. Uh, I think I got it. <laughs> Yay. And then close it right up on the other end. And these ones do seem to be much stiffer as well. They're very, very strong. I really like them a lot. All right. So up at this end, yeah, I'm going to have to cut it because I need be able to work on both sides and I'm going to pause for one second because I need to light a candle and get a little wax going so my candle did not want to light but I did 
get a little wax melted. So I'm just going to dip both ends in this little puddle of wax, hopefully before it dries. And I'll just give them a little, it'll just stiffen my ends up for me for when I'm beading. And I may end up having to do it once or twice more. There are other ways of doing it too. You could use um, clear fingernail polish or any fingernail polish. It doesn't have to be clear. Um, you could try burning. You could probably have burnt the ends up a bit, but ah, probably wasn't a good idea. <laughs> it made a little ball on the end, so it may not go through. It may not go through my beads. I don't know if you can see the little ball it created, but I'll wait and see. This one's okay. So, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a bead cap. to both strands. Oh my word, my fingers do not want to work today. I've been doing a lot of yard work, a lot of raking and cleaning up out there. And my hands are so, so stiff from it right now. Started to get arthritis in this knuckle. It's in pain constantly. This knuckle I'm starting to get a little arthritis bump on. I'm falling apart. I don't want to get old. <laughs> Not ready. Being single and having to do on my own, I really can't afford to be <laughs> laid up with arthritis. <laughs> uh, oh well. So then we're going to put on a purple bead. I love these purple beads. They're so pretty. I love the Malaysian jade anyways. In any color that we get it in, it's always so pretty. So I can try to get both of those through at the same time. If not, I can do them individually, but I'd rather do them both at the same time. So get that. And another bead cap. It's really gray and drizzly and nasty today. Good day to, good day to bead. <laughs> good day to fight with my beads. All right, I think I need a little more wax on them. begin to think maybe it's a speed gap. me. <laughs> I did a whole strand of this the other day. I had no issues. <laughs> so I know it will work. <laughs> all right. I'm going to do them one at a time because, you know, we don't want to be here all day watching me fight with a, a string and a bead cap. some of the stuff out of my way. I don't know if anyone else thinks this, but this box was just so 
necklace pendant heavy. It seems like there was just so, so many pendant options that I think there's going to be a lot of necklaces made from this box. <laughs> so the first purple bead I'm going to put on, I'm going to go through one side with one string, through the other side with the other string. Pull it down. So that it's kind of standing on top of your bead cap. One thing I have noticed with putting um, clamshells on onto string is that the clamshell never really wants to stand straight like it will on wire, but I guess I can work on getting that straightened out afterwards. So then I'm going to put three purple beads on each each string. These will get decent sized holes so it doesn't take a whole awful lot to get them on. all the way down and then the last one so you're going to use eight beads per section and then we're going to do three sections per side until we've made this little circular piece now I find it stays circular better for me if I go ahead and make a couple of knots before I string the next piece. It just doesn't seem to slip and move around on me as much. More part of shape and whatnot. So I just make a couple little knots before I start stringing on my next bead cap and Malaysian jade section. Tuesday morning? I think it was Tuesday morning. I think I'm not 100% sure what day it was. <laughs> With a spider bite. So I know spring is here. <laughs> it was so itchy when I woke up and all puffed up. I was like, yep, yeah, definitely had a spider in here last night. Which I used to be extremely arachnophobic really bad. I mean, as a child, it was, it was extremely bad. Um, as an adult, it was pretty bad, but for some weird reason, and I don't know what it is, but after my divorce, I don't know. I just, I just, as a person, I changed so much, but also my fear of things just kind of disappeared. I think it's because I had to do for myself. There was no one else. I, you know, I had to be 
had to be tough and had to be strong. So <laughs> spiders don't bother me anymore. They still kind of give me the heebie-jeebies, but I don't freak out and run screaming anymore. Fortunately, Maine's pretty good about not having too much poisonous stuff. And there's really only like maybe one spider that's poisonous in Maine and you almost never see it. Alrighty, I know you can go through there. There we go. So this is our piece. This is what we're going to do. Same thing. I'm not going to make you watch me struggle with every little bead cap. and So I'm going to do up a section of this and I will be right back. So now we have both pieces all beaded up. It's starting to look real, real pretty. So again, I'm going to do the clamshell and crimp method on the ends. And because these clamshells are so tiny, I have not been doing the two crimps. So, you know, if you have issues with your crimp tubes, like I have had some of mine that have been really bad, and you feel that you need a little bit of glue in there, Go ahead and, you know, do that meth, do that. Whatever it takes to make you feel that it's secure enough. I'm not going to with this one because so far I've been being pretty picky about the crimp that I use and it's been working okay for me. So I'm just going to open up my clamshell. Drop it on. Put on my crimp bead. Bring that down. And because we're not using um, stringing wire, we're using, you know, thread, a, st a thread, it's way more malleable. So if you, you know, you can go ahead and push it down just a little, give it a little bit of a I mean, I still wouldn't go crazy pushing it down tight, but you can definitely push it down some and <laughs> totally missed that crimp bead. There we go. Trim that off. It's hard to believe how much stiffer these ones are than the other ones. Which is good. They're nice and strong. I like them. So there's that section done. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I've got an excessive amount of your, uh, thread on this one. So yeah, that two feet that I told you at the beginning when I wasn't sure if I wanted to go two or three. I think <laughs> this is what I just cut off that one. I think a foot probably would have been plenty. <laughs> oh well. Better too much than not enough. I had that on there and I pulled it right off on myself. You could also put little beading needles on the ends of your threads. The only problem with that is, for me anyway, is that I always tend to pull them off when I'm, you know, untangling stuff. I, I constantly having to thread them back on again, so I don't bother with them. some of this off. I got way too much.
there. There's those two sections. That's really looking pretty. So from here, I have a really pretty ring, but I don't know what I did. Well, I don't want to be able to steal it from this one for now. <laughs> I'm going to use this here to attach these and this too. I took the little bail piece that was on this off. I found it just to be a little too chunky. Um, I know this is a chunky set, but even so, I didn't. I just didn't care for the looks of it. So I am just going to jump ring it on there with this little bail. Uh, just a ring be bead. It's, you know, it's no. There's no split in it or anything. A donut bead rope toggle something I don't know <laughs> it's like a rope looking donut bead <laughs> and I got a package of them from again the sister store the beatbox bargains and you'll all be happy to know I ordered myself a pair of Zeron needle nose pliers this morning <laughs> hopefully they'll be here by the weekend still need to get a pair of the bent nose but one thing at a time. <laughs> I can open that up a little bit because that's a really thick ring. There we go. So, you know, there isn't enough tree of life in this particular box I decided I had to create a tree of life <laughs> so I did make a tree of life sun catcher my circle didn't come out perfectly round but that's okay I used um, the chip beads that we received in a box way way back and the little pink ones out of that multi strand so I think it kind of looks like a cherry blossoms or a cherry tree or an apple tree, but I made it into a sun catcher and I just hang it in my window here. Because, you know, we didn't have enough tree of life. <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to attach this to these two pieces. Boy, my chair is getting very, very squeaky. Every time I move now, it creaks. It's about time to invest in a new chair, too, I think. Close that one up. Isn't that pretty? That's such a pretty look. I really like that. The bracelet's going to be like that, but it's going to have leather, like the one, the beaded one I made a while back with the leather strap. It's going to be the same idea as that. I hope to be able to fit it in today's tutorial. We'll see. This is going faster than I thought it would. Here's this section. Now this section is going to attach in the same way I did a previous one like this by taking this piece. Unfortunately this one is silver so I don't have to change the end out. And just cutting it in half. Again I'm going for that boho look. And this will attach to this piece. It might be a bit long. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause for a minute because I do want to see how long that's going to be. And I don't want that to be used up in our time. Okay, so no, I, it is perfect. So I'm just cutting that in half. And I'm going to put ends on it that I thought I got up there. there. <laughs> I thought I got out ends.
These are just little fold over cord ends or ribbon ends. They're not really a ribbon end, they're a fold over cord end, I guess. So I want to make sure that my ribbon stays down. The cords are all on top. Try and grip it all. I'm just going to kind of fold it a little bit. Put my <laughs> put the ends right into my little cord end here. I can get them in there. And then push this side over first, or a side over first, it doesn't really matter which one you choose. And then bring the other side over. Give it a smoosh, and we have it all attached. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. We don't need to watch it twice. Now we have that done. We can take and start attaching that with a couple of jump rings. It is a little long, but the boho look is very long. They tend to wear a very long style necklace with multiple chains or you know another another full set of necklace in between, which this will be my in between one here. So it's a little boho, a little yeah, maybe a little goth. I'm not really sure, but. Honestly, I'm not really up on the goth style. <laughs> Although I do like it. So there is this piece so far. And I seem to be missing the jump ring. The uh, lobster clasp from this one. And I probably stole it at some point in time and put on something else. So... I have all kinds of them here somewhere. Actually, the way I have these ribbons tangled into the bag that they're in, it probably pulled right off and me trying to pull it out of the bag. <laughs> I need a better organization system for them. So here's this part so far. <laughs> Put it the right way. And this is what we've got. So I like that. I think it's really pretty. I'm going to set that aside. We'll work on this piece. Now this piece is going to be leather. This is two millimeter black leather cord. Uh, I don't... Mm, how much do I want? Let's see. Where do we want it to hang on this necklace? Kind of want this to fall maybe there. This is such a such a uh, <laughs> professional way to measure this out. <laughs> So this measures out at oops, sorry. From link to 
end of the pe pendant. It is 15 inches, so about a 30 inch necklace total here, which is very long. This one is going to be my cord piece that I cut for it is 12, it's just about 18 inches. It's a little bit over, so I'm going to even it out to 18 inches. And this piece is very simple. I'm just going to put on some of the little spacer beads that we got in the box. I'm going to do five on one side of the pendant, and then I have a, a pendant bale, a bead bale, and then I'm going to do five on the other side of it, and just put a clasp on the end. Let me feed on my bead bail. These are going to be separate necklaces and not going to be attached. And I think missing one. This is how that will look. that part. Now we're just going to put a couple of cord ends. I can find them now. <laughs> so again we're just going to put it in the little little end. so that I can grip it a little bit. And there's one. And, don't get it here out of the way. There's the second one. So it's pretty simple. You could go ahead and put knots on the ends here if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to. You could also spread them out, put knots in between them. I'm not very good at doing knots on leather. Never have been. Maybe someday when I've practiced a little bit more, it'll be something to attempt. But I think it looks pretty cool just like that. I like it. So that is what I'm going to go with. Get out another lobster clasp. And that one's a little big. Let's go with something a little smaller than that. There we go. And a couple more of our jump rings. And you can definitely cut that ribbon piece down more if you wanted to do something like this and then just, you know, not not have to have so much side of my own. Try to make sure it's lobster on the right side for me. Um, so that it's not quite so long if that's what you want. Or you could always attach chain at this point. That would be pretty too. I've already used a lot of chain, so I want to do something different, but I also thought the ribbon made it, you know, gave it that more more of that boho boho look.
and see how it looks. <laughs> All my stuff in the way. Uh, yeah, I like that. I think that's going to look real pretty like that. Hope you can see enough of it. You could also run just a chain around your neck with it or you know in between here or in between here be real pretty too uh, if you had a gunmetal chain that would look real real pretty with that so that's the necklace so far we're gonna move that out of the way and we'll put the earring together and then I'll check the time and see if we have enough time to do a bracelet the bracelet's pretty quick and easy and I can do my beading off camera so hopefully we could do that. So again, we're going to take some of the Eslon. I'm going to take just a short piece here. Do the same thing with the crimp method. I don't know if mixing them in with these clamshells was a great idea, but it seems to be working, so I guess it's okay. <laughs> and we're going to do exactly the same, whoop, exactly the same thing that we did for the sides of the necklace, only it's one little, one teeny little section. Bead cap. Our purple bead. And the bead cap again. string through one purple bead both directions bring that down to the top of our clamshell pick up three Seems to be working better without waxing it. <laughs> I say that and then it'll, it'll do its thing on me, but <laughs> right now, it seems to be working okay. And then take the last one. both directions. Bring it all down. <laughs> Hang on to the strings. Long enough to make a knot. Yeah, that was pretty simple.
So now at this point, we're just going to put on another, another clamshell. And one more crimp bead. I'm not 100% sure that looks good, but I'm going to use it anyway. You do want to try to have it oriented in the right direction so that both of your loops on your clamshells are going to line up pretty well. Come on now. And a little glue in there would be probably a really good idea. Oh, yep. Definitely would have been a good idea. That I knew that crimp bead wasn't any good. I don't know why I used it. Too lazy to get out another one, that's why. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to restring it. I'll be right back. Okay. Now I just need to get out a small jump ring. than I need here. <laughs> Well, the rain has finally let up a little bit out here, so that's kind of nice. Maybe the sun will break through. Oops, get that clamshell a little bit off. And there's the earrings. I think they come out really cute. That one didn't round out quite as much, but I didn't pull the string quite as tight, I think. I think they came out really nice. They're long, that's for sure. Been doing a lot of long earrings lately, but I love these little Tree of Life components here. They're so sparkly and shiny and super, super pretty. All right, I think we have enough time to put the bracelet together. We're going to go for it. <laughs> and honestly, the bracelet, I'm going to do most of the most of it right off screen anyway, because it's the same, same exact thing as this piece right here. Only I'm doing three beads and two purple sections in the middle. So I'm going to do that up, and then we'll come back and work on it. Okay, I have that piece done up. So we're going to take our leather cord. I cut two pieces of the two millimeter and one piece of my braided. 
Uh, you could do it with just one, you could do it with two, you could do it with just this piece. The reason why I'm going with as much as I am is because my ribbon ends that I have are half inch ones and anything smaller is just going to look funny in there because the, you know, the ends are going to stick out beyond it. So I had to go a little bit wide, but that's okay. I like the look of it. So I'm going to put it down over my, right down over my um, ends of my leather. And they do have little teeth in them that will grip. Let me grab something that doesn't have teeth in them, the uh, plier wise. I'm just going to pinch that right down closed over it. And that's going to hold your leather in place. So now I want to get out my tape measure or my ruler. And I want to figure out how long I'm going to need that piece of leather to be. So this is about three inches. So if I cut this at about four inches, that's going to bring me up to seven. And then with my clasping, it's going to be about seven and a half. So I'm going to cut this at four. out of the way. Get those out of the way. And just do the same thing with this one. Get them up in there. Get them all lined up straight. Do the things you need to do to get it into place. Pinch it down a little bit. Get it started. So now we have this nice little leather strap. And I think I want to go with a smaller jump ring. And I know I got out some extras. What did I do with them? <laughs> oh, there's one right there. And these are just little four millimeter jump rings. And I'm just going to use this to attach the leather in the beaded section. God, it's pouring out there now. If you don't get your loops on your uh, clamshell lined up really well, you will have issues trying to thread your jump ring through because then they're, they're offset from each other. So on this one here, they are not lined up straight and I'm having a hard time getting that jump ring through it. So I'm just going to bring them back together so that they line up better. And then at this point, you just decide which side you want your lobster to be on and which side you want to be your ring. I have this smaller closed ring that matches the one in the necklace. I'm going to go with that. And, again, I would rather have a small jump ring. Still not lined up perfectly, but I think I can, there we go. Thought I could get it through there. We're going to put on our clasp ring. Close it up. And then on the other end, we'll put our lobster. The purple and this black leather look really pretty together. Here is the bracelet. I 
and it's really pretty. Love that. I will wear this one. <laughs> I like purple anyway, so. But this is what it's going to look like. Isn't that pretty? Could actually make a couple of dangles if you wanted to. Hang a little something off in it. But I'm going to put it all on a form and let you guys see it before I go. So I will be right back again. So here is our completed set. I think it looks really nice. So I hope you guys all liked it. Thank you for joining me today. So thank you again for joining me. Um, and again, this is the bargain bead box. And this is for the month of... I'm going to bring you in just a little bit here. This is for the month of April. And it is called Blooming Branches. And if you would like to be a member of the Bargain Bead Box and get your monthly subscription in the mail every month, all you got to do is go to the website, which is bargainbeadbox.com. And when you go to order, if you wanted to put in the code SHAR2, you'd save $2 off your first month subscription. It is $22.99 a month, so you'll save $2 off that and get it for $20.99 for your first month. There's no commitment. You can try one month, and if you're not happy with it, you don't have to keep, you know, you don't have to keep up your subscription. You can cancel at any time. So, you know, give it a try. Also, I just want to say that we're halfway through April now. I've only sold one um, super sticker, so if you're interested in getting in on the drawing, for the end of the month that is closing in fast now right at the moment star who won last month is my front runner again this month she won a pretty little rose quartz pendant last month and it'll be something different this month and um yeah but if you want to get in on the drawing you can purchase a super thanks sticker which supports my channel and i greatly appreciate it it'll help me bring out you know bring in better quality videos. I'm trying to trying really hard to get a better lighting system right at the moment. I do need some new tools. So anything, you know, just to help me help support my channel and just, you know, it's it's basically it's called a tip. It's just a tip me a little bit for help me out a little bit here. You do not have to, please do not feel obligated to. But if you'd like to and get in on the drawing, that is fast approaching. So thank you, everybody. Um, I do appreciate your time. I appreciate you spending your time with me and choosing to spend your time with me. You're all wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to me in the comment section, and I appreciate it so, so much. Thank you, guys. Love you all. Bye.